There are so many ways to be creative when we sew. Decorative tucks, for instance, are a very creative way to tailor the fit of a garment and give it a touch of class at the same time. Free motion embroidery is another wonderful sewing technique. Free motion stitching is a little like opening the door of a pastry shop. You are limited only by your imagination because you can mix almost anything together and know it's going to be wonderful. You can use your sewing creativity right down to the simplest touches of your home decor, like coasters that go together very quickly. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. We are going to have a lot of fun. This purse is beautiful, and I bet some of you are thinking, well, I don't have an embroidery machine. Well, this is not done on an embroidery machine. It's free motion embroidery, and the lovely thing is it's easy. Aren't those beautiful colors? Let's just see how easy this is to do. First of all, we're going to trace off the design on the fusible tearaway. Now, I'm going to fuse this, uh, the design onto the wrong side of the fabric. That is important. Then I'm going to straight stitch around in the colors that I'm going to be doing free motion embroidery. You see I have red here. Straight stitch around. Be sure you pull all the threads to the top and tie it. Green, black, and then yellow. Now after we free motion, I mean after we straight stitch, then it's time to turn it over so you can see that I can see what colors are going to go where. Then the free motion embroidery is absolutely beautiful. And this is a beautiful thread, kind of a heavy thread that's been done. It's absolutely gorgeous. It almost looks like handwork. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Barbara Douglas. Barbara is a quilt designer and machine and consultant for Presencia Threads USA. Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha, for having what me. What beautiful, what Thank a you. beautiful purse that is. Thank now you. tell us what on earth we're doing up here. <laughs> well, we're using a hand embroidery uh, thread in the top of the machine. It's a, a Pearl Cotton 16. It's a very fine thread, about the size of a um, sewing 12 weight. And it'll go through beautifully through um, the machine if you use a number 18 needle. You know what? I bet that that's what made that look so beautiful and heavy over there. It's just a Pearl it adds Cotton thread. It adds nice texture. We are, um, we have to, some things we have to a, um, attempt to adjust for our machine. We have to have the pearl cotton coming off the sp uh, ball because it's not a spool. We have, um, if you have an adapter, it has, to be, adapter, upright, it has to be upright. Okay. And if you have a, a thread adapter, like it pulls, it'll just pull it right off. If not, you'll need a, um, a, a cone thread adapter that will spin your thread. Let's see, this just sits up on the upright or? Up on the upright or okay. a, the bobbin spindle. Okay. Or a thread stand. I have this beautiful custom thread stand, but if you have a purchased one, you'll need a, a mug to throw your ball in and pull it through your machine, and then you'll thread your machine just like normal you would with okay. thread. Okay. You'll need a bobbin for every color that you're going to be using of the pearl cotton. And you'll need um, a, th a matching thread color and a 50 weight thread for each color. You'll, we will be using an open toed embroidery okay. yeah. foot and a free motion um, darning foot. We'll need an 18 needle, any kind of eight, number 18, 110 needle. we will trace along our design onto our fusible tearaway. We will then press the fusible tearaway to the back side of our fabric. And we want it almost as large as our, the piece that we need. And our piece needs to be one inch larger than the unfinished block size uh, to take up the shrinkage. Once that's pressed, we will stitch trace around each segment using matching thread in both the top and the bottom, pulling the threads to 
the stabilizer side and tying them and clipping them off so that they're not going to show on the other side because we're going to stitch from this side with our pearl cotton in the top of our machine. Which is what makes it so pretty and gives it that texture. It is, and it's a beautiful texture. It's thicker, and it's for those people that don't have an embroidery machine. Absolutely. We, um, they, they can still f embroider um, using this thread and get some nice added texture, added things. For those of you that don't have a free motion foot, you can also stitch, straight stitch, and you will have to straight stitch, turn, straight stitch, turn, but the free motion is faster. You will do outline stitching in your, um, your darkest color, and then you will stay in the lines, or not stay in the lines, because I like to call this color books scribbling color book scribbling. I absolutely love it. That just makes me happy. The last, I love the fact that you can straight stitch also. Even straight if stitch. You don't, hey, this is, this is exciting. Then we have one oh, more thing. We oh. can add texture to our, like my, the purse we have okay, here. Let me put it over here so you can Thank show you. them again. We can add texture to our fabrics with a free motion scribble stitch or this lightning free motion. Just one more thing you can do with an unusual thread. Well, the thread really is the key there, and you've shown us some all kinds of ways for scribbling. Now, what did you say? Color, Color book. book scribbling. Color book scribbling. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to stay in the lines. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And now Barb has some sewing inspirations for you. Barb, it, that, that's beautiful flower. It doesn't have to be on a purse. It can be on a wall hanging too. The yes, free mo is that the fr this is the this free, is motion. free motion? But yes. remember, we did the straight stitching. Too. We did straight stitching too. Cute little gingerbread man. Tell us about him or her. I guess Our it's gingerbread, gingerbread man is applique, <laughs> and we have the um, free motion scribble stitched all the way around um, to give that lacy look to the the sugar coming out, you know, in the baking, and the pearl cotton to add that dimension for our. Um, I, I do love the dimension of the pearl cotton. Absolutely this beautiful. This is a, th um, a, a block caddy with um, a um, cone flower. This is free motion also, just t real tight. And the table runner, but one of my favorite things. <laughs> and this is a color book scribbling. Ah, this is cool. And oh. all the fab... Um, Really we have back and scribble, forth, and we do a scribble stitch, just and it's fun, and it, you don't, you know, you don't have to stay in the lines on this one. Oh, so you've given <laughs> us permission to get out of the lines. Yes, and this is an, just another um, table runner, uh, kind of a wide one, um, and we have straight, um, either straight stitching or it can be the free motion back and forth. Um, Again, our, using the pearl cotton. Uh, using the pearl cotton. Let me just go up here to this pretty top one. You've used the pearl cotton again on that. I've used the pearl cotton. Um, even the accent fabrics, um, nice, tight stitching. This is just one of my favorite things, to have a table runner and for, you, for all seasons. seasons. And mm -hmm. It isn't as big as a quilt, it doesn't take quite as long. It doesn't take quite as long. And That's I right. just love the use of pearl cotton, the, the texture, it just, it just stands right up, It just up, stands out. And you don't have to have a machine to do it. Uh, well, you don't have to have an embroidery machine. machine. <laughs> exactly, you have to have a machine, you don't have to have an embroidery machine. Well, I guess machine. technically yes. you don't have to have a machine. I suppose it could be done by, by hand, hand, couldn't it? Yes. Thank you so much. And now Barb has a so quick, so easy project to share with you. Barb, those are the cutest coasters, and I don't think they look too hard to make. They're very easy, Martha. I use the Pearl 16 in the top of the machine. Uh, you use a cone thread adapter so that it pulls off easily, and a 50 weight sewing thread. Of matching color. Of matching color, okay. so that it doesn't, the thread doesn't show through. Okay. Open toe and broader foot. Open toe, and an 18 needle, so that the thread will go through the machine easily. We'll trace a design. We'll need a four inch circle and a three and a half inch circle. And then you'll need to trace the three and a half inch circle onto another template so that you can cut out your batting. And it's a wonderful way to use up scrap batting. You'll trace your design and you can use any small design that's kind of open because you don't want it too complicated. 
the batting you center in the cent uh, center of the two squares, and you'll have to have two squares, and you'll pin it so that it'll stay, and so it's not moving around. And this is just a tearaway stair stabilizer. You'll stitch twice around the circle. Now wait a minute. Twice straight stitching around the circle. Twice, yes. Okay. And that with will that with your thread. With, your, with the heavier okay. thread. Okay. Um, twice around whichever components you have in your design. When it's um, everything is stitched, then you'll take just pinking shears, stitch, or cut. Cut. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, cut your circle, and then you'll take a, a big pin needle and score around your pieces so that it's easy to get the pieces out so that you can start ripping them out. And as, you know, you'll have a little bit, but as you score, you'll be able to pull them, uh, the little pieces out. And you have a nice little hostess gift. And that's it. So and that's it. Taking shears around the edge, pull the stabilizer that's away, mm -hmm. and you have, uh, that is a wonderful hostess Wonderful gift. for um, little gifts at a, bridal shower or wedding shower. Well, um, it's, those are just very practical to use, period. Yes. Barb, thank you so very thank much you. for being here with for me today. Me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have some designer techniques to share with you. I am so pleased to have as my guest today my dear friend and business colleague, Kathy Bernard. Kathy is editor of So Beautiful magazine. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. I'm so glad to be here today. Um, today, I have borrowed this dress from designer uh, Susan Gay of Berry Hill Heirlooms, and she did an article on this in the magazine. And at first, the focus was on this beautiful shadow embroidery, but as I got to examining the dress, I noticed these very unusual release box pleats. And where I've seen box pleats before, I could not understand. I was kept thinking, well, there's no top stitch along there. How did she get that, you know, to hold all the way down to the waistline? And I've seen inverted pleats where they're sewn to a certain point and then they release. So as I got to studying how she made the dress, that became the focus of the article because it is a really interesting and unique way to do pleats. And she did all this before she cut the dress out. So she used just a basic A-line dress that had no pleats already in the pattern and she simply just did the pleats first and then cut it out. So I'd like to show you how to do that. So let's go to the boards and I'll show you in detail how she accomplished this very easy um, pattern alteration. First of all, let me show you what you're going to be starting, what you're going to end up with so you know where you're going and we have a goal. This is what um, we'll end up with. This is the right side, and as you can see here, the pleats end with a stitching and they're held in place on each side. On the back side, you'll see that it's actually two different one half inch pleats that are connected here at the stopping point and then release at the bottom. So first you have to do some very good marking. And this is easy because everything is one inch apart. I hope you can see these lines. I have purple lines here and blue lines here. Um, this section represents one whole pleat and this section represents one whole pleat. And each of these pleats are gonna be uh, separated by one inch. So everything is, this is two inches apart, this is two inches apart here. Uh, next, what you want to do is we're going to fold on this line and on this line. These purple marks are going to be our fold line. So right here, we've, we've done all of our stitching. We folded on the wrong side of the fabric. We've stitched down with a 2.0 stitch length and come straight across and ended at the fold line. And you want to leave a three to, two to three inch tail off of each one of these because we're going to use that later. Now from the bottom you want to come back and you don't have to use two different colors of thread. I did that so you could see it on TV. But you would use white thread um, on yours and you would come back with the same thread but switch to a 4.0 uh, basting stitch. Start here and baste all the way down to the bottom of your fabric. And I'll show you why that's important in the next step. Now what you want to do is press both of these um, to each, into each other, to where they meet, they butt together, the folds butt together in the middle, and that creates one whole tuck. You're gonna use your tails to tie this together, as we've done here, there's a knot, and clip your threads close. Now, if, you've, if you're like me and you automatically just stitch off of this and clip it, don't worry, you can tack stitch that with a needle and thread, but it is easier to leave tails and tie it. 
Now you want to leave this basting stitch in. Go ahead and press all of this nice and crisp. Leave this stitch in until you cut out. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to lay your pattern on top and you're going to cut this completely out as if it were just one solid piece of fabric. And then once you've cut out and made your dress, you're going to remove these basting stitches, which will create your, um, your bottom release right here. And then when you hem the dress, you'll simply pull this out and hem it like this uh, as you would any dress and then crease those that pleat once again. Now, one important thing is when you're going to do embroidery as she did in these areas, you wanna do it while it's still open. So you would put your embroidery here along this center line and then after that's done, you would fold and stitch all of your pleats. But that's how easy it is. Well, Isn't that this neat? is well, it's such, it is neat, and it's such a, a beautiful. It looks complex, tailor, and but it's complex. Not. Uh -huh. but, and isn't the embroidery just so sweet? It is. Very you know, sweet. Kathy, this is hand mm -hmm. uh, shadow work embroidery, but just a tiny little touch of machine embroidery oh, for those yeah. who love machine Lots embroidery of too. Minis, all to kinds do. of options. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're Kathy. welcome. And now we have some beautiful hand embroidery for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my very dear friend, Gloria McKinnon. Gloria is an internationally known teacher. She's the author of 16 books on needlework and quilting. For 18 years, the presenter of the weekly needlework segments on the Today Show in Australia. She's the editor of many Australian magazines, including quilting and embroidery, and she's a regular contributor to So Beautiful Magazine. Gloria, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Today I'm going to share with you Lazy Daisy Stitch. It's one of the, the, probably one that we learn at school. It's a really basic, easy one. And over the years, I've used it as a continuum, just as a continual line of one, which really then is chain stitch. And so we've been calling it Lazy Daisy, but it's sort of is both. So if we look at this one here, where we've run it along here, we were going to use that as a, a continuance of the same stitch. And if we look, coming then to here, I've already run my thread through some beeswax because I think that when you're working with a pearl thread, a twisted thread, that that does make it easier to work with. And so then I've come up at A, I'm going to go back into the same hole and then I'm going to take and make sure that the thread is below the needle. And in this case, because I'm pointing up this way, it's actually above the needle, I realise. And then I'm going to go back down into the back here. Now, I call this a clock face placement, so that's 12 o'clock. Now I'm going to come down to 6 o'clock, which means I'm going to come down directly below, and then I'm going to do the same stitch again. And so really, it's just that same stitch over and over. It's lazy daisy done in, you know, as an individual stitch, and that will form for me then any number of um, variations, and this time we're just making a flower. So now I'm going to go over to 3 o'clock and do another one over here. So I'm going back down into the same hole each time, and that's really important. And then I'm coming up the distance away that I want for that petal to be, and then back down to there. And so if we look at where I've been along here, we can see that I've been doing a number of them there, and they're just a very simple, like a forget-me-not. If it was done in blue, it would be good, because it would look like a forget-me-not. Then if we want to work with it here, and we do five of them, then we've got like a scallop. And so we would put the scallop on the top and then another one underneath. And if we look down here, this is a similar placement in that we've got the five petals there and then we're just placing them. They're going to go all the way along there. And then this one I wanted to show, wanted to share this one because this one is with a bullion attached to it. So I'm going to do the same in that I'm going to come up at A and go across here then to B and then I'm going to sit this thread around. And then just like as we do with a bullion, I'm going to wrap it three times. One, two, three. And I'm going to actually change my mind and do four. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make that four. And then, and then pull that through. And so now I've got a bullion on the end of my lazy daisy. And then I'm going to go through to the back there. And so I'm going to do this as a seam covering. It's going to run along the seam. So the first one there, and then up to there. 
We'll do one more of these so that we can really see how this one is. We're going to turn it and wrap it one, two, three, four. And we want to do the same as the one before and then pull that through. And so then I've got a bullion happening on the end of there. And if I can then also show you, I would like then for you to be able to see that one that I've just done in thread that we can see along here. But if we look at this then over here, that's been done in ribbon. And so I think that's rather exciting that you can, any stitch that you know, you can then do it in thread and you can do it in ribbon. So it does work in the same way. And so that's that bullion one that we just did then. So when we look at Crazy Patch, it really is just five stitches. You don't need an enormous amount of stitches. You just need um, to change the color and the placement of that one stitch. And that's what I was showing here. And if we just come even to this little one here and we look at this, We'll just, by doing it in the curve, that just adds some more interest. And it really then is a chain stitch because we've been doing the lazy daisies together. So there are just many, many ways of covering the seams with using that one stitch. And then this one here that we've used is a bow. And so that's just... And that's a, a lazy daisy. And that's too. a lazy daisy as wow. well there, Martha, because it's a wide one that's been done there. And I think we've probably got time to share this one side at least. A lazy the, daisy bow. The, yes, with the lazy daisy bow. So that I'm going to come through there and then I'm going to, and I know that I'm going to have to be quick to do this, but you watch, I can be. <laughs> I'm just going to catch it in two places. Instead of catching it in the one that I talked about before, I'm going to come back down into there. Look at that. See, now if we look, we can see that that's half of the bow there. And made a and made a bow, made lazy a bow, daisy. Yes. Oh, Gloria, thank Isn't you fun? so much. Oh, to yes. me, crazy patch is just so yes. much fun. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Martha. And now I'd like to invite you to join me to see a piece from our vintage collection. This beautiful ladies' uh, lingerie piece, about 1910. Actually, it's a corset cover. And I just want to show you some beautiful, beautiful lace work. You know how I love lace work. This lace technique is called flip-flopping. And I made up that name. Actually, it's just turning the lace over, but that's the only one that didn't have a name. So it's flip-flop lace across the bodice. And look, the flip-flop lace becomes a bow. Can you see how pretty that is? A bow with the bow ties that come down. And th there's one on either side. And then look on the, on the bottom. Another beautiful flip-flop bow, and look at the lace. Really, really wide lace, so pretty. And again, flip-flopping around the bottom. When you bring the lace, the bow, tie, the bow tie tail down, it comes around and goes all the way around to the back. This is quite an elaborate piece of a uh, lingerie. My guess would be that this was probably for a wedding. Now look at the back. Is that pretty or what? Flip-flop lace, let me try to get my hands out of the way. Flip-flop lace that makes another beautiful, beautiful bow in the back. And then the lace comes down. And you know what, there's entredeau right here connecting the bottom part. And another beautiful, beautiful piece of flip-flop lace with gathered lace around the bottom. Now at first I thought when I looked at this piece, does it have a scallop bottom? But it does not. Just the gathered lace has been sewn on. And you know something, I believe that there's one more detail I'd like to show you. So if you'll come back up to the top, I'd like to show you one more detail. This has beading and lace around the neckline. And that's actually way, the way the little uh, lingerie piece gathers up. The ribbon has been run through the beading. So that's the way you fit it. So you could pull it up to make it as tight or as loose as you wanted to. And then the buttons are hidden. This is another sweet detail. The buttons are hidden, the buttons and buttonholes, are hidden by a piece of lace edging that is gathered and goes all the way down the front. There, was not, there were not any details that were left uncovered with this beautiful, beautiful garment. And I bet someone really enjoyed wearing that. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I hope you've had fun. And I'd like to invite you to come back next time.